I don't I don't like testicles. You know, I I. I, you don't really need them. They're kind of a they're kind of a metaphor. They symbolize, you know, war and, and masculinity and violence. And everyone knows that men are responsible for all the wars and conflicts in the world. I almost wish I wasn't a man. How do you feel? Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone, going green has its positives and its negatives. But the thing is, and people tell you to go green, they not literally, but shove it down your throat. There's a lot that is pertinent. But it is a kind of a big sham. Like it's like recycling and everything else is, isn't really working. It's not feasible. It's not economically viable you know who scares me hmm. sarah palin wow that woman just i wake up with hot flashes i Drill, don't know baby. what to do I'm did, so someone, did someone say the p word <laughs> i think everyone's beautiful you know i just kind of picture janet reno and janet napolitano and rosie o'donnell and b arthur maybe we could have a five some oh what about elena kagan you forgot her oh yes less sex sick. appeal than the snapple lady a <laughs> six some you know <laughs> I, I wish I could turn Rosie straight. Oh, I wish I could just bump uglies with that whale this one time. I'm sorry. She's not a whale. She's not a beached whale with a forked tongue and giant fangs. No, no, she's not. She's a, a feminine, beautiful woman on the inside. You just have to look really, really far in. <laughs> okay? It's kind of like an Oreo cookie with a 10-foot a cookie, and there's no cream in the middle. That's a poor reference. I'm sorry about that. Let me apologize for that. Oh, I hope Al Gore's new Montecito oceanfront home I hope that, you know, I'm glad he overcame his fear of the rising sea levels when he acquired that home. You know, I mean, I just hope the tide doesn't go too high and obstruct his view. And I, I'm tired of, I, I don't know, I don't like cars anymore. I went from Pinto to Volvo to a Prius and to a smart car, then to a Vespa, to a bicycle. And now I'm at a unicycle because bicycles have two tires wasting twice the rubber. That's just how I feel. Listen, it's the cry of the rainforest. It's the call of the whale. Can you hear the eco? No. That's so deep. <laughs> I'm sorry for the dead air. <laughs> I'm sorry for everything. The Mexicans are all leaving right now. There's supposed to be a big mass exodus here coming up of all the Mexicans leaving. So I don't know when, the, when all the uh, Native Americans left, it was the Trail of Tears. So when the Mexicans are leaving, we got it. How about the Trail of Beers? <laughs> How's that work, Rob? <laughs> yeah. Just follow the bud cans and the Corona bottles. Take you right to there. <laughs> Woo. Once again, statistically accurate. Yeah, and speaking of which, uh, yeah, here's a, from the Washington Times, uh, angry, hateful, violent extremist liberals. Uh, and again, a, a group of angry demonstrators toting swastika, festoon, protest signs, calling politicians Nazis and shouting obscenities and racial remarks and throwing rocks and bottles at the police officers said to keep order. Well, that just took place. Those are the protests you just saw. And they've been <laughs> dubbed the tequila party. <laughs> whoa, 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 wait a minute. Wait. Serious? We have Tea Party versus Tequila Party now. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well call it the Tila Tequila Party. Yeah, and it's funny because typical you know, headlines describe the protest by the Tequila Party as mostly peaceful, well, that keyword in there being mostly, which is highly inaccurate. In fact, an Associated Press story about the Arizona immigration law quoted a 13-year-old Hispanic boy saying, we can't be in the streets anymore without these pigs thinking we're illegal immigrants, <laughs> quote, unquote. And I added the voice. The Washington Post uh, sanitized the boys' views towards law enforcement, replacing the word pigs with police. Well, that was nice of them, wasn't it? And the accusations were never uh, proved, you know, from much of the things like, for instance, uh, when all the black congressmen claimed they were, quote, you know, called racial terms, which they obviously weren't substantial video evidence. And eyewitness accounts suggested the events never even happened. Breitbart put out the $100,000 reward for anything recorded, anything at all. Nothing ever came up. It kind of makes you wonder. And there's no press coverage. Uh, however, when supporters of legal immigration used physical intimidation tactics and made threats of violence against demonstrators on the National Mall the same day. So it's kind of funny what gets covered and what uh, doesn't get covered. But well, it's, it's funny, Justin, because huh? the Tea Party always portrayed as these ignorant, barbaric people. And then, why golly, these tequila guys are so nice as they vandalize and assault the police. They're just great people, right? I, I just can't get over that they call it the tequila party. <laughs> I mean, and then Sting gave that thing for the environmental stuff, and they were calling it the Green Tea Party. I think everyone should get their own party. Pretty soon the blacks... Um, 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 the Mr. Tea Party. There you go. <laughs> first. I pity the food on vote for Obama. <laughs> All right, maybe the gays too. The gays get the tea bag party. <laughs> I'm gonna keep going with that one. Oh, we got one more. Do it. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm gonna say the Jews. You even get the tea sacks party. Oh, no. I even went there. There's a line, and I crossed it. I'm very sorry, every Ashkenazi Jew born in 1880 in the tea sacks disease. Back to you, Robert. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for transitioning on such a lively note. Uh, so basically, the tea party are mostly peaceful people, very middle class, very blue collar, and then tequila party is basically a gang riot. And you know what? All I can say, Justin, is this up? The, I mean, damn, it makes me mad to watch a, a bunch of third world degenerate scum. Assaulting our police with rocks and bottles, you know? And enough political correctness, you know? We don't want your illegal, illiterate, unwashed, and worthless masses 
plaguing us any longer, okay? I'm just going to put it like that. You guys have the reverse King Midas touch. You know, everything you touch turns to crap, unlike what King Midas touch. That turned to gold. Everywhere you go, you ruin it. Every crime and financial statistic is against illegal aliens. You're killing this country. And we're supposed to just take it in the ass and watch the country die because of Barack and the homos in Frisco are going to start a boycott? Oh, no. Well, check out our second show in case you forgot all the stats. All the facts are against the legals. So all you liberals can do is play the race card. Why don't you take your race card and shove it up your ass? Because, you know, you, hey, you want to play the race card? Let's do it. How about you ask black people how they feel about illegals? Or how about you even ask legal immigrants? Ask the legal ones or Asians or Mideasterners. Let's ask those groups how they feel. Because I'm willing to bet that about over 50% of each group wants to get the border closed. And, you know, if some dumbass, light in the loafers liberal, asks you, what should we do then? Tell them this. Tell them you want Mexico's immigration policy because it's perfect. It's the absolutely fair thing to do. Long live America. You're on the air. Hi, yeah. You were talking about prayer in schools. Well, about 40 years ago, I was a school teacher, and uh, when we had the uh, little Jehovah's Witness children in the class, um, you know, we would say if the other kids were kind of coloring a jack o' lantern, they would color a pumpkin. We tried our best to to not in, you know, to respect their views and yet to incorporate the kids in all the activities. And I think we pulled it off pretty darn well. But a good 20 years after that, when my kids went to school, um, there were two Jehovah's Witness kids in the school, and uh, in a school of about 400, and they wouldn't let them celebrate any holidays at all. The, the administration wouldn't, um, because they said it wasn't fair to these children. And, you know, just look at how the times changed in that. You know, uh, at one, it, 40 years ago, we respected everybody and respected all their views, and then turned around 20 years after that, and just a couple in the minority ruled the whole group. I'd like some comments on that. Well, no, you're right. In fact, that was 1962 or 63. That's, this whole separation of church and state thing it is not in the Constitution. It was just meant to not nationalize religion. It does not mean religion cannot be in any school. That's ridiculous, but you hear liberals tout that quite frequently. And, you know, prayer in school, as far as you were talking, it's non-invasive. It doesn't hurt anybody. And, you know, obviously there's a difference between sponsoring what we, I guess you call state-sponsored prayer I mean, I understand not allowing that, but that doesn't outlaw prayer in school. And I think that's where liberals fail to see the difference. Oh, I think you're right. I think it's, things have gotten just completely topsy-turvy crazy. No, I know. And like you said, you know, what's funny is that the Jehovah's, <laughs> the JW's, <laughs> and, you know, whatever, I have nothing against them. But it's funny. They pretty much mind their own business. But it's funny that now if you're a Muslim, you can do anything you want in school, probably wash your stinking-ass feet or praise, <laughs> what, five times a day. They can't obstruct you from that. When it comes to a Christian, once again, it's funny that Christians are actually becoming the martyr of all this, almost a pariah in the school. But Ooh, I, I don't you know say why is Jehovah's Christ- mind their own business except Sunday morning when they're knocking on my door. <laughs> 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 Otherwise, not lovely people. Yeah, ma'am. <laughs> we I went to Heathrow Airport in 2005, a couple of weeks after they had their blow up in their tunnels, and uh, um, my husband's luggage was completely torn apart. It was ridiculous. And right ahead of us, when a whole family of people in turbans, and they never even looked in their luggage. Oh, of course. Or they were not. spinning over backward to be politically correct. No, that's right. The most likely terrorist never even gets a glance, and there's blonde hair, blue eye, you know, <laughs> Sally Jane the over lawyers. there, yeah, straight out of the 50s, mm-hmm. you know, an, an anachronism of sorts. And look, oh, Whitey, stop right that there. That guy's name's Chip. Let's y- get him. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> and we're sitting there. Chip. Obviously, the white person is most frequently not going to be a terrorist, nor is the Hispanic, nor is that's not who carries the bomb on him. You know, like we said, it's Ahmad right. and friends. La and so bomba, la we bomba. don't care that sounds along with America, so don't even know about it because it's the truth. La, 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 Remember, la, la, political la, correctness la, is the death of honesty. It's only a courtesy. It is not honest. I it agree. is not forthright. Yep. So, ma'am, mm-hmm. last word goes to you. Oh, no, just thank, thank you so much for getting the truth out there. Nobody seems to have the guts to say it except you guys. Yes, we thank seem to you. be the only uh, radio show with the cojones to do it, and I don't know why that is. The fight for our country is here and now with Rob, Justin, and Jason.